Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo, bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo, bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo, bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Gloria al Padre, y al Hijo, y al Espíritu Santo. Como era en un principio, ahora y siempre, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Oh Jesús mío, perdona nuestros pecados, líbranos del fuego del infierno, lleva al cielo a todas las almas, especialmente a las más necesitadas de tu misericordia. Dios te salve, Rey, Madre de En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Some special items on EWTNRC.com this month are these personalized First Communion gifts. Whether you're looking for a wall cross, holy water font, desk shrine, or arched plaque, each of these EWTN exclusive items can be personalized to commemorate this special occasion in the life of every Catholic. To order, go to EWTNRC.com and search FC 2024 to see the full collection. EWTN, live truth, live Catholic. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Litany of Saint Joseph. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. God the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Renowned offspring of David, Pray for us, light of patriarchs. Pray for us, spouse of the mother of God. Pray for us, chaste guardian of the virgin. Pray for us, foster father of the son of God. Pray for us, diligent protector of Christ. Pray for us, head of the holy family. Pray for us, Joseph most just. Pray for us, Joseph most chaste. Pray for us, Joseph most prudent. Pray for us, Joseph most brave. Pray for us, Joseph most obedient. Pray for us, Joseph most faithful. Pray for us, pattern of patience. Pray for us, lover of poverty. Pray for us, model of workers. Pray for us, example to parents. Pray for us, guardian of virgins. Pray for us, pillar of family life. Pray for us, 
comfort of the troubled, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the church, pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. God made him the master of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, in your ineffable providence, you were pleased to choose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother. Grant, we beg you, that we may be worthy to have him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Saint Joseph, spouse of Mary, Virgin Mother of God's Son, show us how to love and serve them till our life on earth is done. You obey the angel's message, us all to God's will alone. As you let them go to safety, guide us to our heavenly home. You, the carpenter most humble, Jesus learned from you this trade. Help us work with true devotion, all for God, for love were made. Noble son of royal David, just and faithful, chaste and true, teach us how to live with courage, share with Christ his glory too. Jesus is constantly at work in our lives. Whether through a subtle whisper or a dramatic event, our Lord is encouraging you to turn away from earthly things and toward Him. In His second book, Spiritual Lightning, answering your call from Jesus to master His values, popular author Deacon Richard Eason helps you recognize these game-changing moments of grace. Inspired by sacred scripture and more, Deacon Eason will help you live as Jesus taught. See how powerful saints, as well as ordinary people, have been transformed by embracing our Lord's teachings and letting God's power run wild in their souls. Spiritual Lightning, answering your call from Jesus to master his values by Deacon Richard Eason, the latest release from EWTN Publishing, now available at EWTNRC.com or call 1-800-8 8546316 He was a Renaissance legend known as the Apostle of Rome who would become one of the most beloved Italian saints of all time a prayerful and humble man widely known for his charity and notorious sense of humor who sought out the poor and impoverished youth of Rome to catechize them in the Catholic faith a teacher a missionary a father he was Saint Philip Neri here on the Global Catholic Network EWTN it's more than just another radio show. It's a beacon of truth. Fasten your seatbelt and find out why they call Deacon Harold Burke Sivers the dynamic deacon. Whether it's today's culture, sacred scripture, or the teachings of the church, Deacon Harold and his guests will help set you on fire for the Catholic faith. Truth is a person. Truth is a dynamic relationship with the living God. Beacon of Truth, weekdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, only on EWTN Global Catholic Radio. There's so many challenges in this age, instant communication, you know, changing technology. And with that, um, we've seen this fragmentation. Raising children rooted in God's love begins where faith, science, and education meet. So we want children 
to learn that they don't have to have, you know, simply skill building you know, to go on their own success, but they can rely on the life-giving relationship with Christ and His grace during the rigors and the challenges of growing up. It's a way to bring development under the umbrella of baptismal grace, sacramental living, and it's a way to integrate virtue and interpersonal neurobiology. Discover God's plan for children of all ages with new lessons from the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on EWTN. It's another news day in Washington, D.C., time for the EWTN News Nightly team to go through stories they're going to cover. I have an interview with the Senate Minority Whip about a new bill that they plan to introduce later this week. The president is coming back from Camp David. I plan on being on the South Lawn to get some comments. Every weekday, the EWTN News Nightly team is planning, monitoring, and doing whatever it takes to bring home the news and issues that are important to Catholics. We just lined up the interview for the A Block. That works. All day long, the EWTN News Nightly team continues to watch out for breaking news and updates that impact the stories they're covering. We just got video from the White House. Let's cut back on the Q&A with the guest in studio to fit it in. Okay, that sounds good. From our nation's capital to the center of the Universal Church of the Vatican, no one delivers more news from a Catholic perspective. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. I'm Tracy Sable. EWTN News Nightly. Clear. Concise. Catholic. EWTN podcasts are the perfect companion for busy Catholics everywhere. Your favorite EWTN programs are waiting for you to listen to on your time. With on-demand access to audio, you can pause and pick up right where you left off, anytime, anywhere, which means you can enjoy at home while on the road. Or you can even listen to Crest in the Afternoon at night. Just subscribe by using your mobile device's free podcast app. Find old favorites or discover something new. EWTN Podcasts, they're waiting for you. Our next act double majored in psychology and reverse psychology. He apparently didn't learn a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Ray Garendi. Some of you people are not clapping. What are we paying you for? Guy walks into my office. He says, Doc, I don't know what's wrong with me. One night I have this dream that I'm a teepee. The other night I dream I'm a wigwam. Am I losing it, Doc? Nah. You're just too tense. Hey, I'm trained to make these kinds of diagnoses, you people. Tune in for new episodes and all new jokes. We hope! On Living Right with Dr. Ray. Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern on EWTN. EWT, live true, live Catholic. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the conversion of sinners. O most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore you. We thank you for inviting us into your kingdom and for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Let EWTN Global Catholic Network be a great instrument for the conversion of sinners. Soften the hardened of heart, melt those indifferent to your goodness, and inflame those who are without love. Together with Jesus, we offer our prayers, sufferings, and sacrifices this day for their conversion. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood.
do this in memory of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, on this Wednesday of the Easter octave, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord.
Dominus Vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Vangelii Secundum Lucam. Gloria That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and abating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel and besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted it to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Verbum Domini, Lord, 
these two disciples on the road to Emmaus were still in shock over the death of Jesus. They were still stunned at the way Jesus died. No, they, uh, the sadness, they, they had a certain sadness over them, and even a numbness. And so they were very focused on, on their own doubt, you know, questioning themselves, debating, discussing what's really happening here. And then hearing of the news that he has risen, but yet still not fully believing that Jesus has, has, had rose again. And then Jesus appears to them. There he is, present among them, and they don't even realize it. And brothers and sisters, you know, we who are living a life for Christ, striving to be holy people, people of God, you know, sometimes, you know, life, life is not fair. You know, life is difficult. There are many struggles, many hardships. And we can often get too focused on these things that we forget the promises of God. We forget that what was prophesied in the scripture, what Jesus spoke to us, and the work that he does in and through us through the cross and through, uh, through the power of his resurrection. So here we have these two men in Emmaus walking and Jesus appearing to them. No, they were in, in a state of doubt. And then they recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. So here we see together Jesus, who is speaking the word to them, was telling them about the teachings of the prophets and Moses and how, you know, what would take place for the Messiah. And then, you know, they, they, they're there, they invite him to stay with them. And he goes among them and then he breaks bread. You know, and then that's where they recognized him. And what, is this, what does this remind us of? Here you have the word of God. Here you have the breaking of the bread. Jesus present in the breaking of the bread. Well, that, that should all bring to mind the holy mass, the sacred liturgy we celebrate here. And here in, in the liturgy, as we know, we have what's called the liturgy of the word. Then the liturgy of the Eucharist. And so th this is what we're seeing very early on, the Word, the Eucharist. And there, brothers and sisters, God is truly present in the Word, in the Eucharist. They go together. And this should give us all hope. Now, when we go to Holy Mass, many times we... We, we, we expect something, and we should expect something. We, we should come with expectant faith. No, and, and sometimes we don't come with anything at all. We come merely out of obligation. Well, I need to go to Mass, or I'll say, yeah, you know, then I'll have to go to confession. You know, I, I have to do this. And, and that, that shouldn't be our intention there. We should, we, should, we should be prepared to come to Mass. And even like if, if we are like these men here who are suffering from the trauma they experienced at the death of Jesus. Now, we all are going to have something, some kind of cross to carry, some kind of difficulty in our life. But we, we, can't, we can't let those hardships of life bring us to doubt. Or, or get us in such a way where, where we're so self-focused or self-absorbed. Know that we forget about God's power. So, you know, when we come to Mass, there's, there's many ways we can prepare, prepare, of course, by our prayer, by, by speaking from our heart, by coming in expectation, because here 
Jesus, in the liturgy of the word, he's present, and he's going to speak to us. And then he, his real presence, body, blood, soul, and divinity, we will receive. And there will be grace. There will be communion with Jesus. So we come here, and we, we, we've got to remember that, that, that Jesus, that through the power of his grace, that through the work of the cross, there is also the resurrection. And there in the cross, there is transformation. Okay, that we, uh, as St. Paul says, we, we go from glory to glory to glory. See, it is, it is through the cross that we, of course, come to unite ourselves with the Lord, that we are strengthened by him who carried a cross before us, Know that, that there he, he, he brings about a, a sanctification. You know, but, but this could be unification. So that, that's the way we got to see it. So that when we come here at Mass, we give it to him. We bring it to him. We hear the word and says, okay, I've heard, heard the word. And it could strengthen, bring so much strength. And then, and then we, we, knowing that Jesus is there present, no, knowing that we can be strengthened by this word of God, that we hear of his promises that are reminded, that are brought to us. And then, you know, we have after the word, you know, there's, there's the intentions, the prayer, the prayers of the faithful. Well, this is, this is the time we bring them to God. And then there's the offertory where, of course, we're offering ourselves, we're offering our gifts before the Lord. There it is. And we offer it to him. We give it to him. And then he is fully present. You know, there is a, what we call the Paschal Mystery, the representation of Calvary. Jesus here, you know, the, the, the crucified Lord. And then, you know, as, as we do that, then we receive the Holy Eucharist. Well, the Holy Eucharist there is Jesus himself coming inside of us. So here we, we have the Paschal Mystery here at the Mass. The Word of God. You know, there, the life of Jesus. Then he, you know, the representation of Calvary, the giving of Jesus, giving of himself for us. And then now he's made fully present here in the Eucharist. We come to receive it. And here is a grace, the grace of resurrection. See, and then, and then, then, then we are strengthened once again. And so th this, is, this is perfect opportunity to unite ourselves with the Lord when we come to Holy Mass. See, that's what we got to think. When, and that, that's how we, how, how we can prepare ourselves. Is this okay? First of all, you know, you're speaking to the Lord. You're in your own personal prayer, giving him everything, saying, saying what am I going to hear today? I'm going to give it all to him. He's going to give himself to me. This would be the high point of our week where we filled up. No, there are some of us who, who are blessed. You know, we can come to Mass every day, but many of us can't. You know, you, you, you have jobs, you're going to school, maybe you're taking care of kids, you're homebound. You know, of course, you can pray spiritual communions. It's good that you watch Holy Mass. You can give yourself through the Holy Mass, hear the Word. Again, do a spiritual communion. You know, that's wonderful. It's a powerful thing. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, that God who does a great work within us. You know, he, it, it, this, this life with, with him, this Christian life, it is about transformation. You know, it is becoming more Christ-like. But to become more Christ-like, there needs to be a cross. You know, then there's the resurrection, then the glory to glory. And, and this will happen over and over again as we walk with the Lord. And, and here is the, the, the transformation. And this gives us great hope. Because what, it, what is this ultimately doing? Is it's bringing us closer to Jesus. You know, it's helping us to know him more deeply, more intimately. And it's making us more like Jesus. So that here, you know, here we, we're coming to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Here he is pouring love on us through his word, through the Holy Eucharist. And there we, we should really know that we're loved by him because of what he has done for us and what he gives us. And then with this love, 
you know, with, with, with the graces we receive, walking in faith, we strive to go out there and be the light of his presence everywhere, loving God with all our heart, soul, and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. That is how it's done there. You know? So, you know, we look to Jesus now, and we trust that whatever cross we carry, that he is going to do great things through this, and that through this cross, he gives us everything so that we can share in his life and death, but also his resurrection. Glory be to God. God bless you all. With joy in the hope that is always ours in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, we turn now to our Heavenly Father. For all of those who do not yet know Jesus Christ, that during this Easter octave they may encounter the risen Lord, come to faith in him, and profess him as Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer for all those who have left the practice of their Christian faith, that they will be given abundant grace to return to Christ, who is drawing them to himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are isolated from receiving the sacraments at this time, that through the televised mass, they may profoundly experience the risen Lord's presence with them and be filled with hope and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the abundance of divine mercy flowing from the open heart of the risen Lord may bring about greater peace in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are grieving the loss of a family member or friend, that they find consolation in the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, who is leading us to glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we recall our restoration through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and our hope of rising again, we pray, O oh Lord, that what we celebrate in faith, we may possess an unending love through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May and the Lord Jesus. accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name. For the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord and our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damon, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may defend, be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom who you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. 
Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the Lord, and we confess your resurrection unto you again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with the serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation that deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. 
O oh Jesus, I turn toward the holy tabernacle where you live hidden for love of me. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot now receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, render it like unto your own. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia.
provocations. God our Father, who wills that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of your truth, we beg you to send laborers into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness, so that your word may spread and be glorified, and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, pray for us. I adore thee, O Jesus, God of love, truly present in the most holy Eucharist. Echoing Mother Angelica's devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, the poor Clares of perpetual adoration would like you to meet Jesus in the Holy Eucharist and